I'm Andrew Marlowe. And I'm Monica Marlowe. Welcome to Marlowe House Presents Backstage. Today we are also joined by none other than Melissa, who is portraying Agora in Skein of the Blackbone Bride. And we still have Scott on mic because, well... Uh, it's poor life choices on your part. Yeah, it we is. can't kick him out of here. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Funny you should say that. <laughs> <laughs> so we Last just... time we had Scott on, we talked about the fact we couldn't kick him out. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I got the memo. <laughs> Ta -da. It was sent around the office. <laughs> You're at Marlowe House. We have interdepartmental mail. <laughs> How come I don't get any interdepartmental mail? You just don't check your mailbox. Oh, you I don't didn't get the memo? No, I don't send him memos. Oh, yeah. It's just easier that way. He doesn't read them anyway. Yeah. I would. Okay. <laughs> we don't even have mailboxes. It's okay. <laughs> what have I started? <laughs> so we just wrapped up recording Skein of the Blackbone Bride. We hope for the last time. It better be the last time. It was fun. I love this adventure. I really do. This is one of my favorite Numenera adventures. I think we've run it about eight times now. Uh, Not just here. I don't even want to count. I mean, I ran it several times at Gen Con. I've run it for this. Shoot, our Sunday campaign kicked off with this. Mm -hmm. I think I ran it one time for our Sunday night group in preparation for Gen Con the first time we ran it. It's entirely possible. Because you played it once before, didn't you, Scott? I I did. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't Blackbone Bride. It was uh, Ujvon. Oh yeah, it was the uh, Devil's yeah. Spine. Yeah, you were in the Devil's Spine. Okay. Or started to. Right. We started that one. So anyway, so Melissa, this is one of your first times playing Numenera uh, or Cipher System. What do you think about it? I really like it. Uh, I really like pared down systems where you can get into more of the role playing and don't have to get too bogged down by rules. So I really like how simple it is. And I learned it not right before this uh, adventure, but right before another one that we recorded, but ended up not being able to use the recording. Uh, but that was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. And I learned that night to play Cypher System. Had a few questions about it, but uh, I feel like I picked it up pretty quickly, and it was really yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. And then we also recently wrapped up another Cypher System game. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think about dinosaurs? Oh, my gosh. I had so much fun with that. <laughs> um, I was crafting all of the dinosaur accessories, so... We had the best dressed dinosaurs in that game. Yeah. <laughs> we did. My Velociraptor had a laser helmet that I never got to use, unfortunately, but hey, it works. I had a laser helmet. It was still the best, best dressed Velociraptor, Velociraptor ever. In, in the building, at least. Yes. <laughs> we almost had a really well-dressed T-Rex, but that didn't work out. He didn't want to wear my poncho. But nobody wants to wear a tent. Nobody wants to wear a poncho either. No. Yeah. <laughs> nobody with any kind of taste wants to wear a poncho. It's right. true. <laughs> so back to what we did tonight, though. Skein of the Blackbone Bride. Mm -hmm. Do you guys enjoy Skein of the Blackbone Bride? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Enough to play it twice, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting playing the same adventure twice. And I, you know, I wanted to kind of remember how I reacted to certain situations, but also kind of throw in some new things. So it was it was really fun. And of course, Andrew being a great DM kind of mixed it up a little bit so it wouldn't be the exact same ending yeah. this time. I didn't so. want to do it exactly the same, but it it is sort of sort of planned out in one one course. I really like telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could use telepathy in more of my adventures. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Telepathy's fun. Yes, it is. Yeah, you know, the first time I, I played it, uh, the character I played, which is the one I do in Sunday night, was a telekinetic rather than a telepath. Oh. Uh, so our group handled the spiders quite a bit differently than what we what we did as a as a smaller group. Which was basically ah and throw things on them. <laughs> <laughs> well, like in, in the other group, we've we've gone we we're taking like the slow path or the the, the slow XP gather route. Uh, so we're almost tier four at this point, and we held on to the adhesion clamps forever. I think we ended up 
trading them off in the last couple of months for something else. Whereas in the one that we three did, uh, we got to use them almost as a makeshift weapon against the spiders, which ended up really cool. Yeah, that was so awesome. Major <laughs> props on that. That was pretty great. Yeah. Actually, that kind of brings me to one of the things I really like about the system is because it's so narrative, you can do replay on a lot of these adventures. And some of the big surprises might not be surprises, but a lot of the action changes just by changing what characters are available because the character options are so diverse and um just deciding to attack one one problem a little differently than what you had before you can end up with wildly different results yeah you end up bringing home tagalongs and all sorts of things <laughs> that's just what happens when you play with me <laughs> Very true. <laughs> I think you've I think you've picked up a I I mean, I played a character I play a character who has a friend in every port, but you really have never seen someone <laughs> That was that was almost aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean I am not that kind of person in real life, so I guess that's what role playing games are for mm. is to step into, you know being somebody else for a little bit but it's it's funny because like i basically not until i started gaming with you guys did i realize how much i tried to pick up all of the npcs <laughs> well and did you did you discover that that's only here or is it it's pretty much only here but i only play one shots here and i feel right. like you know that's those kind it's of not NPCs. like she's ever coming back to these places. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to stay tied down to any one man. <laughs> or any one game. <laughs> or any one game, yeah. Actually, in the Infinity Shift, your characters ended up hooking up. We got married! Together. We got married. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But that was... Well, and you don't really. That, you... Was, that was after. That was following a very clever use of hee haw. Yes, it yes. Was. <laughs> if you can't bond over hee haw, I mean, what can you bond over? But Melissa Nothing. tends to play more um, charismatic characters. Everything that you've played so far has been a very talker over attacker kind of a concept, and that does lend itself to getting into conversations with. NPCs or other characters that you might not otherwise take that path with. Right. So being persuasive and using that kind of thing is something that I've noticed that you do. Yeah, I I rarely ever play muscle characters. I mostly play very charismatic talker characters. Um, just because that's what's most fun for me in a game like i i played another system which was very role play heavy very um you know game dynamics light well i mean the way we played it at least and there was one night that i went completely without rolling dice at all and i loved it like if i could just have a role playing game that was fully guided by role playing i'd love that well as a matter of fact we have a couple of um options that we're thinking about for later so i'll keep that in mind awesome and the and yeah you you really hit on one of monica's favorite things to say um if i was just about to say it too well then go we right ahead because <laughs> i just wanted to segue into it i was gonna let you say it <laughs> so scott andrew and i used to larp and play vampire one of the nice things about larping is you don't have to engage in a challenge unless the other person feels like that's something that is appropriate or if you feel like it's something appropriate to initiate and i always felt like if i was throwing chops you know we play rock paper scissors to see who wins that if i was throwing if i was getting my character sheet out and throwing chops that something had gone terribly terribly wrong and i was probably about to die mm -hmm. so when you're playing vampire all of those bits on the sheet for me are more flavor and using disciplines and stuff like that isn't something that I really felt like I should be doing on a nightly basis at game that mm -hmm. it's a political game. And if you're using your vampiric powers, 
you're really not playing the game, the the political game correctly, even if you are playing the actual World of Darkness game as per the rules. Yeah. And she's carried that over. The what I was expecting was the the thing that she has carried that over to is if she has to pull out her dice, something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Right, because my dice don't like me. I think we've I think we've recorded enough times of my dice showing just how much they don't really like to produce things above sixes for me that yeah. it really isn't. I've seen it <laughs> yeah, I think, in person. I think at some point we should do like a one shot Pathfinder or something. And just set up a, a camera on on your dice section, just so you can say, "Hey, look, this is really a thing." <laughs> well, but then I, you'd roll fantastic. Well, I'm going to be the that would GM. Be the secret. That's the secret. <laughs> That's the secret. Uh, we are going to play Pathfinder, and I'm going to jam it. Yeah, I'm so. excited. So, and that, That's, that is on the table for very soon. A couple yeah. weeks from now, uh, end of June. Yeah, mid-June. which means mid-June. hopefully by August we'll have it. Right, we'll be recording it in mid-June and hopefully have it out after Gen Con, maybe? That's the plan, isn't it? I think so. Just depends on what type um, rollout we're going to do for our Mm -hmm. episodes. But yeah, depends on what order we want to release them in. Well, thank you guys for sticking around and talking to us a little bit after gaming yet another really late night. And... Coming out well, to no replay. To <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Do this and during to, daylight hours. Well, and, and, and to replay something that we've already played because the computer ate. The computer ate my homework. The computer ate our homework. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all right. It was fun. So again, thank you. Thank you all for listening. I'm Andrew Marlowe. And I'm Monica Marlowe. And this is Marlowe House Presents Backstage. <laughs>